important for this election. The only thing accomplished by this election uh, will be uh, to get rid of dissidents, really. This election was announced uh, in the middle of summer, um, days, just days after the signing of the new bailout deal, uh, before people have a chance uh, to understand what has happened to them. And uh, he is trying to get rid of dissidents, people inside his party that stood loyal to the Salonika platform, the program with which Syriza won January's election. Uh, because, of course, it is Tsipras himself who decides who will be on the ballot and who won't. So, I guess the lesson is that, for whatever reason, Tsipras has capitulated to the creditors' plan. Maybe we should say that when you are trying to uh, change uh, the, 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 the way that you're governed, you have to be ready for anything that finance capital can throw at you. And uh, in, in this case, it was the banks. The banks uh, were used <laughs> as tanks, as were the usual, the usual joke. Banks became uh, banks tanks. Banks became tanks. Is that in the press? Something like, no, it's not in the press, but it's a widely used joke. Because uh -huh. it was actually... Um, the stop the seizing of liquidity that brought the capitulation and the thing is the question is who controls uh, the currency and yes we like um, any project that unites countries together that makes um, uh, uh, that goes from small uh, entities to larger entities because larger entities can serve people better than smaller entities. But in the case of Europe, I think that the euro, in the way that it was designed, and the fact that the euro was designed before bringing real social change to each of the countries, this was um, maybe the euro is the single most... Um, um, centrifugal uh, force in Europe right now. In other words, the euro is what uh, will bring Europe apart. And I think it is a failed project. Uh, Greece certainly couldn't um, use um, any uh, powers to change the structure of the euro. And um, maybe we should... Uh, um, we should um, see the, the truth here that Greece should get out of the Eurozone because there is no other way to bring social change and this, the, the, the thing is um, to give an example for others Michael, we're, we're perfectly willing and uh, probably at this point even anxious, eager to entertain that. Uh, the thing is, I think what you said before, that the, once you're in power, you got to do the contingency planning for whatever might happen. It's like war planning, right? Every defense ministry is supposed to be ready with a plan for anybody who's going to attack you. You've got to have some idea of how to, to deal with it. And I think what we, f we saw then was that despite, you know, rhetoric and good intentions and even some preparation, the contingency planning wasn't there. So it's like, um, you know, Czechoslovakia at M Munich, they never got to Munich, but in 1938, Czechoslovakia was told by the British and the French, you're going to knuckle under and do what Hitler said. And yeah. uh, they had to, because they didn't, in, actually in that case, they would have had things to do, but they, the leadership wasn't ready, right? The people were not thinking right. So I think that's fine. Uh, and what we're always interested in here is, do you see any signs of anybody who's preparing a way to actually get out of the euro? That might be yes. a very healthy thing, even healthy for the euro, right? That, you know, you better watch out, make it palatable in here because people can leave. It is. The, the, many Syriza MPs have uh, broken away and uh, created this popular unity party. This is right. going, all polls show that it's going to get inside parliament. Actually, 
I am they they they, they show around three to four percent, but I think that it's going to be much higher than that because undecided voters uh, that voted for Syriza on January, I think, are going to lean towards this party because major Syriza personalities are there. Um, mm-hmm. Now, they, they Professor Lapavitsa, for example, is there. He says that he does have a plan. Others <laughs> uh, never let him uh, publicize it that he does have a guide to how to get out of the Eurozone. And um, we should see, we, 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 are waiting, we, wait, uh, we are waiting to see this party enter parliament and bring forth the governing agenda, the agenda for uh, governing. But let me ask you now, with the, with the, uh, this, this, uh, the unity group, right, popular unity, they say, down with austerity. But do they also say exit the euro back to the drachma and here's how? They yes, they 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 haven't publicized the plan how to get out of the eurozone, but they haven't fetishized the currency, and that's a good thing. The thing is, mm-hmm. the main the, 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 their main thing is social change and policies of investment policies and uh, monetary policies. Um, that's problems, but they see currency as a tool, not as an end. Okay, we'll see you next week, Michael. Try to get a hold of that Lapavitsa's plan, huh? Yeah, thank Don't you very ask much. for it. See you soon. Welcome to the second hour of World Crisis Radio. This is our Labor Day edition. Now, of course, we know that the real Labor Day is May 1st, and that started in Chicago and then went around the world with the demand of the eight-hour day. Pretty soon, the eight-hour day is going to be a necessary demand, because even that is being eroded by these financiers, these parasites, these Trumps with their trumped-up platform. But now let's talk about the opposition, and that is to say um, forces with whom I am closely associated. We're talking here about the Tax Wall Street Party, the United Front Against Austerity, and uh, similar groups. The, the, the news that I have this week is Facebook, um, after a period of, uh, well, quite a long time, several years, when I was not able to keep up the Facebook uh, side of the effort, uh, thanks to the fact that I now have more people helping me, that I've, I've actually recruited people uh, to be part of this effort, and we've got really several hundred more clamoring to get in, uh, this is going to be a formidable operation. Uh, let's start first with uh, Facebook. Now, the, the problem that I have to address here is counter-organizing. Uh, and Delphic sites, Just let me just talk about Delphic for a minute, right? When you say Delphic, you're referring to the Temple of Apollo at Delphi in the ancient world. And this was uh, a central point for the entire Greek and Persian uh, worlds. It was a group of priests, uh, the writer that we know as Plutarch, the guy who wrote the parallel lives of the Greeks and the Romans. Plutarch was a priest at the Temple of Apollo at Delphi. This is, of course, later on. This is in the you know, 100 AD, I guess, or whatever it was with, with Plutarch. But it was a bank. It was a finance center. You could have loans and so forth. It was a a cult. In other words, you could ask the Pythoness, this priestess could be asked questions. Uh, And therefore, these priests rapidly evolved as bankers and people getting news from all over the Greek world, the Eastern Mediterranean in general, became a center of secret intelligence operations. Now, um, We can think of the uh, Temple of Apollo at Delphi. Uh, They were, when it came to a battle between the Greeks and the Persians, they were in favor of the Persians. When it came to a battle between Athens and Sparta, they were in favor of Sparta. So they were in favor of the oligarchy at every point. And remember, it was the Temple of Apollo at Delphi, which anointed Rome, Rome, city of Rome, as the new imperial center by sending the so-called Niger Lapis, the black stone, which still is displayed in Rome, 
Uh, they sent it as a token of victory for the Romans in their battles against Carthage in the Punic Wars. So the world dominion or Mediterranean dominion of Rome was anointed, was, was uh, approved, sanctioned by the Temple of Apollo at Delphi. Now, their method is mimicry. This is absolutely critical. The, the, the way that the Temple of Apollo at Delphi works is something like this. You have Plato. Plato has his school, right, the academy. Plato's academy is the center of uh, anti-oligarchical thinking. It is uh, the questions of human progress and, uh, and the development of the mind. So the priests at the Temple of Apollo don't like this. So what do they do? Do they do a frontal attack on Plato saying, down with Plato, he's a bum. They don't do it that way. They do it through indirection and trickery. What they do is they prepare uh, a guy called Aristotle, who was famous primarily uh, as a botanist because he was a poisoner, right? He's the guy who poisoned and killed Alexander the Great. Unfortunately, the recent uh, Oliver Stone movie he couldn't quite get their gumption up to tell you that one. But Aristotle was right there. He fled. Aristotle uh, took care of Plato by resembling Plato, right? And you'd say, well, how can that be? This is so obvious, not the same. But unfortunately, people have a very hard time distinguishing these things, distinguishing between, say, somebody like me who has a program and a whole bunch of Brand X characters who don't have a program. And somehow people don't see that the program for me, is primary, whereas these guys don't have it. I don't, haven't got time to, to go through that entire list. So Delphic means mimic. A Delphic site means something that looks like Tarpley on Facebook or looks like Tarpley.net, but it's not. And it's often put up there, frankly, by enemies. The enemies deploy counter gangs, people who look, sound vaguely like you, some of the words are the same, but the whole essence is completely different. So the issue was then Facebook. Let's get back to our Facebook orientation. Uh, if you go to Facebook, you're going to find that there are some imposter sites of this type, which uh, obviously are not the real thing. So here's what you want to do. On Facebook.com, Facebook.com, you can have Webster Tarpley. W-E-B-S-T-E-R-T-A-R-P-L-E-Y, uh, that's me, uh, and that's my personal Facebook page. That you can like. Indeed, if you'd, if you'd like to do me a favor, go ahead and click like on facebook.com forward slash Webster Tarpley, all one word, nothing in between. There is also a site, a fan site called Webster G. Tarpley, that's the fan site, and there you're invited to come and uh, you know check in as a as a fan. Now uh, I'm unfortunately told that five thousand is the most friends you can have. This is not me. This is this Zuckerberg and company. I do not approve of them, but there it is. So we're we're close to five thousand. So if you want to become a Facebook friend of yours truly, and I would be honored, then please go to the one that I said, facebook.com Webster uh, Tarpley, right? That's the one. So, and then after that, I guess we can have an unlimited number of, uh, of fans, and I'd be honored by that too. So now, um, what else do we what else do we have to deal with closely related uh, to this problem is um, on the uh, on Facebook there's there's an imposter uh, site now let me see if I get this one right uh, the imposter site on Facebook is Webster hyphen Griffin hyphen tarpley so if, facebook.com forward slash Webster hyphen Griffin hyphen tarpley no hyphens no, no hyphenated American here, okay? So this is an imposter site. You're invited. If you want to do, do me a favor, for which I will be grateful, unlike them, block them, forget them, ignore them. And connected to that, there are two blog spots. These are websites on the normal internet. And one of them is called webster-tarpley.blogspot.com. That's an imposter site. 
Don't have anything to do with them. Don't give them money. Don't help them in any way. These are all part of the same operation as far as we can